so what I was trying to explain to him is that a man that feels unappreciated is a man who it will will be petty about what he does. But a man that feels appreciated will give you everything that you want. Yo, what's up, Squip and Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Gina Bion, my good friend uh, from Last Comic Stand, and she's here. We discuss how we're programmed as parents, new parenting techniques, how your little, how your son, she has a son, and how she's going to raise him as a man, the proper way to ask what you want, and and the importance of honesty. Yeah, that's uh, right. You can yeah. go get a consultation from me and Harry. Harry is... Uh, you could email me at advice uh, from Harry at gmail dot com, and Dante. And you get me at DanteNero dot com. Click on consult, and you can do consult. Don't forget to follow the Patreon. Don't forget to follow the YouTube page, and and like and comment and all kinds of stuff, and share it. And and yeah, um, Patreon dot com slash Manschool two hundred two. That's where we're doing the bonus content. Like today, we do a bonus show with uh, Gina Brion, where we talk about uh, the double standards for in sex for men and women, the role reversals. Uh, raising a thoughtful child and why you should not be scared of taking risks. All that, uh, it helps us run the show. Go over to patreon.com slash manschool202 uh, to support the show and get some bonus content and listener mail. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Hey, yo, yo, GYB, we get you both back, WWE. DD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. And uh, now I know I've said that 500 times before, uh, but this uh, this time I mean it because uh, this is a special show. It's a special show because we got a special guest, and I and I really mean that. I really mean that in a big way first and foremost harry what the fuck is up with you well i mean i'm living a great life dante that's what's up with me every day i get up i got good skin i've been told now so that's that's good that's skin. making me feel good and that's how you start you got to start with good skin and then work your way uh from the it's better to look outside first and then fix the inside that's what i have found yeah <laughs> that's I, the I, advice like looking, I'm giving. I like it looking deep inside and then figuring it out from there yeah yeah that takes too long that <laughs> takes too long but if you get that's some good moisturizer said. that's what she said uh <laughs> i'm gonna introduce our guest uh good friend of mine a love of the death um we just we just we just grew apart not really but just <laughs> We don't see each other no more. We had babies and we it's, had babies. And it's just like, yo. That's what happens God. when you have babies. It's all about those fucking babies, man. Remember how? People are like, oh, I got a baby. I gotta keep it alive and shit. It's all the member berries. You remember? You remember? You remember? You remember? You remember? <laughs> so it's good to see you, Jay. What's going on? Good. I'm good. I miss you. I miss hanging out. I miss doing non uh, mom things sometimes, but I'm pretty sure I got Play Doh in my nose right now from yeah, playing with my son. It happens. It, happens. <laughs> it gets in the darndest places. <laughs> Play Doh's guessing going to be the new Bill Cosby show. <laughs> Play Doh gets in the darndest places. <laughs> But Gina, so all right, uh, did you think you'd be at this place? Like, did you always want to have kids? Did you think you'd be yeah. like Shit. this, where you'd be a mom, uh, just doing mom things? We never fight it. I didn't think so. I didn't know. I didn't she's know. Puerto Rican. She's I knew I, was, <laughs> I knew it was in my nature to birth them. Uh, uh, well, I kind of knew, like, if I had a kid, I was like, if I have a kid, great. If I don't have a kid, great. Like, I was kind of real, like, whatever about it. I was like, all right, if I have a kid awesome but i wasn't one of those people that was like oh i'm gonna have you know little kids maybe when i was like young young i remember when i was really little telling my mom i'm gonna have three kids and their names are gonna be that 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 and then as i got older i was like mm, i'm kind of not though mm -hmm. and then i ended up having my son and it's been pretty dope i've always been really maternal anyway just in my nature so like it was just it was just now i had more of a focus to it because you know, it takes all of your energy. Yeah. Happy has always been nocturnal. 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I've always yeah. tried to find like, hey, how can I get some sleep? <laughs> when can I get some sleep? I could I be sleeping now? You know, it's important. Sometimes I kick him in the, in the stump of a tree and Harry's he's sleeping. He's in like the an unborn baby. Tree. I'll fall out. I was taking a nice nap and I'll he's fall out. He's also arboreal. I'm just dropping him. I got. I can't lose today. Arboreal, I don't know that one. <laughs> I What's can't arboreal? Lose today. <laughs> he's nocturnal and arboreal. Show me your big ass eyes, Harry. Oh, is that what arboreal is? <laughs> He got some big like old a, eyeballs. Like a ferret? Like a like an owl? Whoa, whoa. There will be no negative ferret talk in front of me. <laughs> don't they have big eyes? I don't know. Man. Do you still have a ferret with the kid? You still, I you have, have two ferret. ferrets. I have two ferrets now. I had three, but I have two ferrets now. Um, yeah, he's fine with them. He doesn't mess with them. They don't mess with him. He's like, he likes to watch them play, and then he's like, I'm done. Oh, they don't play with him? They don't fuck with him at all? They want to. He's the one that's like, I don't. Uh. Mm. <laughs> He's like, I don't know why. Uh. <laughs> really, mom? <laughs> He's like above it. He's above hanging out with these ferrets. Yeah. He just Jesus, sits there. He's like, picky. I mean, they're fun to watch, but like, whoa. Yeah. He's not interested in them. Did you think oh. you'd be, did you, do you consider yourself a cool mom, Gina? Or did you think no, you'd be a cool probably mom? Not. No. <laughs> I want to believe I'd be a cool mom. I think I'd be an understanding mom, but not a cool mom. Because I don't want to try that hard. That's too hard. I can't try to be the cool mom. I can't. I'm going to be the goofy mom who makes you laugh and that you'll have fun with. But cool is out of the question. I, I, I feel like Gina's like a cool. She's, she, she'll, she'll be a cool mom. She's, it's not fun <laughs> not to be a cool mom. I mean, she runs all over the country and tells jokes. Slings That's jokes. true. It. So it's like you don't realize what what you know doing this business, you know how much it makes you young. I mean, like I see from, I see dudes my age, like I grew up with. I'm like, hmm, these motherfuckers, yeah. these motherfuckers is old, and they're like old. Like when I looked at old people, and then when I tell people how old I am, they're like, get the fuck out of here. But because mm -hmm. we spend so much time laughing and and. Well, it's a young business. It's a very stunted growth business, you know, because I remember Donnell Rollins was talking about that. He used to do it. He does a Thanksgiving show in his hometown. I think he's from D.C. or something. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. he'll do a Thanksgiving show. And then one year he just started going, man, these motherfuckers are old, like to all his friends. And he's That's like, it. he goes, wait a minute. I went to high school with him. I'm the same age. <laughs> yeah, you forget. Yeah. But I think that is part of it. I think that that might make my son think I'm cool. Like he might be like, oh, it's cool that my mom travels. But I also feel like children of comedians at some point get tired of our of our shit. Oh, the bullshit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, that that to me would be the biggest fear is like when you get those teenage girls, especially just teenagers in general. But like they were just where they're embarrassed by everything. They're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, and you're like, hey, shut the fuck up, kid. You don't know what I've been through as a comic. I know what <laughs> the fuck cool is. You're smoking in front of them. Yeah. You don't know what I've been through, yeah. kid. Relax, shithead. I've been through some well, stuff. My, my ex-wife my ex was like, you know, when I was like, man, man, I'm trying to think when I was, I was in my 30s when I was with her. And her, I helped raise her daughter. And she is smoking hot. And I was smoking hot. And so every time we would go on a vacation, like a family vacation, some couple would be trying to swing with us all the time. Like, what do you guys do? I mean, do you like, ma'am, we're on a Disney cruise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, you want to go uh, ride Splash Mountain in uh, attaching cars? <laughs> you want to go in the ball pit? You know, like. I think there's an oh, age no, limit, that, to be honest. I, think you're, I don't think we're I don't think four adults can go into the ball pit without raising suspicion. Yeah, said, who, I said, think so. said, who said so? Yeah. We're all to top. I'm like, you man, really I'm 60 map that we're to top. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I did I, I really think it's 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 different. But I also feel like we well, that's not true because I don't who shall remain name. I know some comics. Who had kids who their kids are just horrible just that's so you know, funny. brought them brought them around us too much and just you know gives everybody the finger and goes fuck you and you're like you know like i'm gonna have to fight your kid now 
Now I have yeah. to fit fight your kid. Well, yeah. there's that weird balance of trying too hard to be the cool parent or, or just trying yeah. to do like, like, uh, yeah, man, this is my kid's going to be different. And then there's all, but you learn there's reasons that you have rules and shit. You know, you don't just want the kid being bohemian and running wild because they, yeah. they end up being assholes like that. You know, it's a tough balance. You don't want to be. Yeah. We also, as a comic, there's a certain awareness that you have about people's personalities and their insecurities. And I don't, I mean, I know for me, there's a lot of um, me thinking about, okay, this type of person becomes, these type of behaviors become this type of person. So it's like when you're on stage and you're getting heckled or somebody's talking, you already know, you know their dossier already. It's like you, you've seen it so much, so much, and so often. It's weird because, you know, everybody thinks they're different, but everybody's the same. Like all women are the same, but so are men. All men are the same. We all, whoa, whoa. we act. <laughs> The same, we all act the same. I mean, we're just, you know, that's why there's human behavior. Well, I if mean, you believe in the theory that we're all programmed, which everyone should, we are all programmed to act within a certain barrier. This is how yeah. women, this is how men act. This is how we're programmed. And it's the people that deviate from that program that annoy like the boomer generation and like older generations because they deviate from the programming and they go, well, I don't want to do this. And right. this new style of parenting that I think um, a lot of people are getting into myself included this conscious parenting of like, I don't really have to always feel like I have to grip my son up to teach a lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's sometimes when that's needed and sometimes when that's not. I think that's what the, and I, that's why you're right, Harry, it is a balance. Like you don't want to have the douchebag kid, but yeah. you also don't want to parent the way you were parented. Cause we were right. all parented by unhealed people. Well, you also, I think the other thing is to you, like, if you get, if you parent your kids the way you were parented, I don't think you necessarily come up with the douchebag kid. What you come up with is a kid who has extensive fear of so much and so like for instance i had a lot of problem with my son being you know because his mom's basically a hippie and he's in england right and so he just has kind of she has this kind of let's say feel like he 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 walks around without pants on all the time um he's very relaxed yeah, but in all fairness, that. Dante, didn't you spend most of your twenties walking around with no pants on? Hey, I mean, <laughs> if we're being honest, didn't you make your didn't you make your living with no pants on for a very long time? As it is not a dancer, there's no revenue. He's not getting no revenue. So <laughs> That's what you're upset about. So you your problem is is the gross, the the uh, the financial gross. That's where you draw the yeah, line. You're saying he's not killing it. He's not killing it. <laughs> See, that's the problem. You're not around me. Go, hey, when I was your age, I was swinging my cock and balls. I was clearing at least uh, uh, yeah, five I'm figures. A G a week? Easy. Yeah. You know, this guy's just walking around naked for free. Like, what's wrong with him? And he jacks off constantly. He's jacking <laughs> off. Like, full... No, he's no, not. Wait, you're being serious. I thought he's you were. Not. I thought you were fucking around. I you you serious? Joking. He's not. He's straight jacks off. Oh, that's your son. There's no DNA test needed. That is your son. <laughs> straight jacks off. Like, like he will. He he could be on the phone with you and just and he's jacking him. And, she, and she's kind of like a hippie. So it's like, you know. And I get it. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to give him shame surrounding yeah, yeah. it. But right. at the same time, it's like. Honey, you can't. We're at the supermarket. Like you can't just allow it everywhere. Like there's a level of like so understanding. Is something I want to ask you because I mean, great, great kids can become great human beings. Great human beings become great Ooh, partners. Mm -hmm. Become great, great in relationships and all relationships of relationships. So this is what I was thinking about too. It's like uh, you, you and I kind of grew up. The same way with parents who weren't putting up with no bullshit. So like you couldn't, you couldn't climb on the coffee table and do a show. You know what I'm saying? Like so sing funny. and dance. You couldn't, 
you know, like you couldn't paint on the walls, and like my son, he be, he does art on the walls, and they're like his his grandmother's a hippie, and his mom was kind of so they're like, oh look, they're like, oh look at what he drew. It's just, it's, I'm like, it's on the wall, like what, <laughs> right? So at first I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, where's the boundaries? But you know, and and Harry's a great example of this. Like, I'm always trying uh, to get Harry to go to draw on the walls and hmm. jerk off the <laughs> public, and 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 sure. wow, sure. these are the things he's trying to get to do here. He won't do it. He won't do it. I'm begging him. I'm begging him. Can you jump on the couch and jerk off? He's like, nope. No. Harry, I'm gonna advise Sorry. you against all of that. Okay, <laughs> I right. would like to. That was my instinct too. I go, this seems like it's <laughs> gonna hurt me in the long run. But Dante yeah. has always been a father figure to me, but this has been where it's problematic. <laughs> I think I am dealing with some of the issues where he's trying to spread his knowledge, but it's a little late for me <laughs> in my late thirties. I'm trying to get him to change. He won't change. But but here's what I wanted to ask you, Gina, and this is something I wanted because we haven't really talk talk about parenting and stuff like we always grew up with this kind of stigma of expressing ourselves artistically right and 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 i mean i'm even talking about maybe not so much the jerking off harry but Hmm. Um, you know, I understand that it's figurative, don't you? Yeah, you, know, you want me to hope so. You want me to be more adventurous and more, uh, not, more not adventurous, but I think you always come, you you always end up on the conservative side of things. Do you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. always yeah. don't, even if I tell you to do something, you will always, most of the time, will do a lesser version of what I. To a degree, yeah. Advice. Sometimes, yeah. It's a, I'm better with that now, but it's not, especially back in the day. It was. Uh, well, yeah. Put it like this: I don't ever. I'm never worried about if I give Harry some advice that he's gonna overdo it. He's he's never overdone. I'm it. not an overdoer. I'm not an overdoer. He's never yeah. gone over like like damn. Like I've never done that. I'm like, oh, yo, yo, that was that was about right, right? Even when he's questioning. If he's overdone it most of the time, it's like, nah, you could have swung a little hard on that, right? Yeah. So here's my question. What I noticed about my son, because of the fact that I'm watching him, because I'm not there enough where I would probably rein it in, I almost feel like it's a good thing that he is so, so open to everything because you can always discipline them and pull them back. But if you got somebody who's shy and who's intimidated or somebody who's insecure or looking, you it's really hard to get them to go forward. It's always easy to rein them back in than it is to... So I was wondering what you thought of that. Um, I think, you're, I mean, a lot of us were exactly raised with that, with this, like we were shamed for expressing ourselves in a lot of ways we were yelled at. And when you think about the psychology, even of a kid like writing on the wall, I don't think a child wakes up and goes, I'm gonna ruin my parents' day. No. And right. I'm gonna write on this wall. This kid was expressing themselves, wanted to draw something, didn't have a paper, got creative. And there's always a way to handle the situation where it's like, cool, yeah, buddy, we can't write on the walls. Luckily, mommy only has washable markers. Mm -hmm. So we're going to clean off the walls and right. then we're going to get you some paper. There's always a way to do it. I think what we all struggle with, especially um, since we were raised by people who didn't have the luxury. And that's why I don't blame our parents for not being healed. They didn't really have the luxury of being healed because they they didn't have time to do the work because they were surviving. They wanted to just survive. Their idea was, I need to keep this tiny human alive and well, and let's just do that. And so for that reason, of course you got yelled at when you when you're drawing on the walls. Your yeah. mom was overtired. Your dad was overworked. Your, you know, everybody was so burnt out at that time. So we have more of a luxury because we have things like daycare now that we're comfortable with or right. little break that we get to kind of reclaim ourselves so we have that kind of foresight to be like i don't have to yell at this kid for every little childlike thing this kid does that's right, the idea right. they're kids well you know 
also is it, you know, hmm. I find it's really interesting for me is that um, even when I talk about the whole, um, like, like for instance, with, with, you, with our parents, like, I, I mean, just me as a young black boy growing up in Brooklyn, it's like not being, ref, being suppressed and is, 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 could, could kill you. You know, could you not understanding how to deal with police officers, mm -hmm. not, go, you know, going into neighborhoods that you shouldn't be in it, or being around gangs and not being aware of what's going on. And so it was literally like, I'm trying to keep you alive. They, I mean, they are talking about their own personal survival because, you know, we're talking about food and shelter and stuff like that. Yeah. But beyond that, just, you know, police brutality and racism and all of these other things that that come into play as well that that come and I, and I realize that my son is so much more expressive because he's had this freedom now the question is you know he's going on three he's getting ready to go into daycare it's like where does that you know where does that happen I mean that that but it's always easier to suppress somebody's it's always easy to suppress than to get them to to be outwardly creative and open and honest because I me mean, time and time again I've I've uh, I've counseled I've counseled numerous guys who just yeah I'm in this situation and I like this girl and I don't know what to do and and I and I don't know how to handle this and you know um it's really hard like I have a whole process that just gets them to get past the approach anxiety. The first, the first step of everything I do is to get them to the point where they're not afraid to just to approach a woman that they find attractive or they're interested in a real kind of open way. Because you get this thing. What I what I find a lot of times is like a lot of a lot of white boys are like you can't say nothing. You you know I mean they're so accustomed to being able to. Say whatever they want. Say whatever they want. The fact that 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 they're not allowed to be racist or sexist or homophobic, or they take the fact that they can't maintain their level of abuse as a uh, as I'm trying to think of the word uh, like disenfranchisement. They, like it's almost like they're being a punishment. Of yeah, some kind, like, yeah. it's like it's no, it's that your behavior has overridden, has spilled over on everybody else's. And now because your whiteness doesn't create a situation where you can where you can um, act in ways where you just can't do what you want with no consequence. And here's the thing, you people think, oh, it's cancer culture, you can't say this, you can't. Oh, you can say it, there's just a consequence for it now. And because there's a consequence, now you wanna say, well, no, what I wanna be able to, I wanna be able to do what I wanna do, say what I wanna say. And, and not only do I not wanna be, uh, not only wanna be accountable for it, but I wanna be praised Mm -hmm. I mean, if you you think about comics back in the days where, you know, these racial tropes and sexist tropes was not only did they expound them on them, but they were praised for it. Yeah. You know, we look at like remember Lisa Lampanelli was selling out theaters being racist and sexist and homophobic. I mean, well, no that's the thing. Not. The people that are worried about cancel culture are the people that say racist, sexist and homophobic things. That's yeah. why you're worried. The people that are not worried know that they have nothing to worry about and they understand. And this is something that I've talked about on stage now is language has forever changed. Yeah. How do you not understand that? We used to talk in old English. We mm -hmm. don't anymore because language changes and evolves. You can either go with it and realize, yeah, you know what? I get it. You're like, I should be able to say whatever I want. And cool, you still can. But the question that now arises is, should I be saying this? Mm -hmm. Is this low hanging fruit? Is this something that is obviously painfully disrespectful and ignorant? Yeah, yeah. And, and those and are the reminiscent of Reminiscent of racist and sexist tropes that that have always existed that you've ignored and you've exploited the other That day. are just died out now. Like that has died out. So you either change with that or you sink your talons in and you go, I'm going to stay here and best of luck to either path. 
because oh. either path doesn't guarantee you an amazing career. Either path is just a choice you make. You either sink your nails in and you stick to the old tropes and the old issues, or you advance with the times and you see what happens. I what? would love to see a lot of the people that you would never think of talking about um, this change in a positive way. Like I would love to see the Bill Burrs of the world, like really eloquent, like people that put together good material. I would love to hear a different take. And even I was that way first too. I was the first to admit my adding to it and being frustrated with it at first until I started unpacking a lot and having a kid and realizing different things about myself and my priorities changing and understanding the world from a different perspective as I unpack things about myself and being like, oh God, even looking at some of my old material and being like, oh God. Yeah that was really such an easy joke that was so, and I, whatever I, people appreciated at the time, or I looked at and I just go, oh Lord, I wish I could just erase that blimp off no. of there. And you know, it's great to go back and go, well, at the time it was okay. Well, should it have been? Now that we're thinking yeah. about it, should yeah. it have been? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think I have changed much. I don't know. I mean, Harry could probably better. I, I think you have. I think you have, especially on this show, there's language and words that you well, don't I mean, use. I guess, yeah. Well, I mean, we, we talk about language, but I don't think my perspectives have changed much in terms of because I think we've always led with with a certain level of respect. And I think that what we what we the way we change now is is that when we're joking about this cartoon like um chauvinistic thing we just don't do that anymore but he, i mean even when we were doing that it was as it was a joke it wasn't we weren't expounding yeah, yeah. i i think but i think that's a lot of it is that for most people it is a joke the problem is that it, it, it's problematic certain topics are problematic or perspectives are, are problematic in how you present them because it's Society views it a little differently now because it's a lot. It's come to the forefront of how many people are suffering mm -hmm. and what type of life it is that, you know, all these things that people have dealt with that it's very difficult to deal with. So I think that's part of it is that's I don't think the intent is different. I think it's just how you explore those ideas are different and the words you use. That could be a little bit different. I think the conversations we're having now, which are the important conversations, are the conversations about intent versus impact. Yes. Which is why when people are saying it wasn't my intent, cool, but do you understand your impact? We realize it wasn't your intent. I don't think anybody goes on stage and intends to say something that's going to piss people off and get a letter written to a club or oh, no, something. No, but they do, they do intend to laugh at something that they think is uh, they're uncomfortable with, with the intention on bringing it down, which because the result is different, then all of a sudden there's a cop out because the results are different. Yeah. So- Well, that's I, a different type of person though. That person that goes in there and is like, yes, I'm intentionally talking down to that. That person is almost poking the bear. That person at this point in this climate is going, I'm gonna poke the bear and I'm gonna say things that are intentionally gonna make you upset. And I'm like, that's cool, but you're still, it's not like you, you may look at that as leveling up. You're not leveling up. You're just, you're still staying stuck in the same place and going, I'm going to say this and I know it's going to make you mad. And it's like, cool. That's the equivalent of a tantrum in my book. Yeah, it's like dickhead Gino and he, his, his, all you know, Bisconti. Yeah. He's always, he's always like this political correctness. You pussies. And it's, no, it's just, it's just really not funny. It's yeah. It's not, not funny really, anymore. It's rich. Just really not funny. Holocaust jokes is not funny. Racial jokes is just not funny. Um, you know, it, 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 it's a weird. Well, certainly how Gino does them. I mean, you know, well, there's, I mean, there's, there's certainly no. You guys, you guys. Yeah, yeah fuck him. I don't care. And I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this, this toddling of, 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 of this, of these, these, this, because it's not like we haven't had talks with him, you know? I've had talks with a guy like, and if that's how you gonna rock, I get it, dog. You get it, but just stay the fuck away from me. Like I'm not, yeah. you know. And then the fact that you can, I mean, 
even, you know, if I'm, you know, one of the things that I say this over and over on the show, if you're a human being who is willing to make mistakes, who will make mistakes, are willing to apologize and change, you can't be a better human being than that. Like, there's no yeah. such thing as better than that. And I mean, not give a half-assed, you know, like mock change where you give like a half-ass apology for something or you double down. I have no problem going, you're right. I probably should have made that joke 10 mm. years ago. You're absolutely right. And yeah. and I'm aware that that joke exists and I'm ashamed that I was doing that back then. So right. I understand you've just discovered it and right. I understand you're upset. I have no problem saying that because when yeah. we go to intent versus impact, I always use the swinging door right. analogy. Yeah. And yeah. that's the swinging door. If I swing open a door, I didn't mean for, and it hits you. I didn't mean for it to hit you, yeah. but yeah. I swung open a door and it hits you. My impact matters. Yeah. And I think that's where people are now like, understand your impact matters and do with that what you will well also uh it's going back to what you're talking about before and, and we'll get back to the parenting thing with regards to that when you talk about the therapy in the previous generations that they didn't really do therapy it's interesting mm -hmm. in this country i i mean this new generation is just starting to do therapy now like this this generation um and it's funny because i find that the people who need therapy the most are the ones who see who get it the least people of yes. color people who have really been traumatized by this country black people latino they i mean latinos in my family don't do any type of therapy um, oh yeah i try well, to bring that we're convinced that it's a, you're, you don't tell your problems to a stranger yeah. and yet for years for all of us it was okay to share your problems with a priest for years, it was okay for us to like sit down with your favorite girlfriend and gossip about all your problems. Yeah. Way too much actually... info to the wrong people. That's so funny. You won't tell a therapist, but I'll mm -hmm. tell this guy I sat next to at a, a fucking party. Yeah, we're bored I'll at. tell the bartender. My bartender, yeah. yeah, yeah. A drug. So it's like, yeah, a, a lot of people won't go to therapy, and it's because they have this idea of this this stigma of therapy. That like the second you go to therapy, first of all, we're all traumatized and we're all unhealed from something. Mm -hmm. Nobody is 100% healed. We all have our level of trauma because That's we're humans Harry. raising Harry. humans. Harry's perfect. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, the Excellent. skin, Harry. The, the skin, skin is perfect. perfect. The skin. Um, my skin is doing great. We're humans raising but... other humans and humans are flawed and mm -hmm. humans are going to screw up and we're try the funniest thing is other humans trying to tell people what to do. Like yeah. none of us know what we're doing. The sooner we admit that we'll actually get to a better place. I have no idea. Nobody has any idea. I don't know. Again, cause Harry, Harry's perfect. I mean, Harry's, Harry's father did tell him that women are the devil. He did. He did women. say women are the devil. He women asked me to devil. guess how I know, <laughs> but my dad is also a, a guy who makes his own problems and he doesn't even realize it. You know, it's, He's a guy who thinks the world is against him, can't catch a break. And then I show up at his house one day. He's got all new white furniture, white carpet. There he is. He's like, sorry, J-Lo was staying in my house. Yeah, yeah, he exactly. requested that everything be all white. He's just hanging over there, sw swishing a glass of red wine, just going, Clear. what do you think? I'm like, I think that you fucking built your own mousetrap over here that you're going to get caught in and frustrated by. It's just funny. That, and who is getting therapy, though? It is like rich white people. Are the ones who have the yeah. most access. Just people going, you know, my my father embarrassed me at the Maserati dealership last oh, week. God. I haven't been or skiing in weeks. Or I was the poorest kid at the rich kid school. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh yeah. my God, bro. Yeah, but that's who's getting it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to trivialize anybody's trauma, but when you hear that and you're like, it's the difference between, I remember having this conversation with somebody, somebody going, I was made fun of for not having the newest latest sneakers the hottest you know outfits and i was like in my neighborhood you were jumped if you wore that stuff we grew up differently yeah. you can't relate we you can't go to the same group different. therapy session no no yeah. <laughs> like certain no, we grew up different how does that impact uh you being a parent now gina like what what are the things that what is the big thing that you don't do anymore that your parents did at one point or um, your family i did? don't tell my son and this is a conversation that i may need to have with my parents um i don't tell my son that there's no reason to cry i don't shame him for having an emotion i will explain to him the situation and go crying is okay but mommy cannot help you until you tell her what you're upset about mm -hmm. 
And when you tell me what you're upset about, now we can unpack it. And there's times when he gets it, and I mean, he's two and a half. Like, the first time it happened, he was crying in his high chair, and I said, I understand you're upset. I don't know how to help you until you tell me. And he sat with that for a second, and he went, want to get out. And I went, okay, you want to get out of your chair. That's all you have to say. You, next time you want to get out, just say, I want to get out instead of crying. Hmm. Have you tried going, I'll give you something to cry about? Has, it, has that been <laughs> useful? I actually all? have that tattooed on my body. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when Gina said that, it was so mother-like. I was I almost was like, I need, I need more blowjobs, mom. <laughs> you so I mean, That's how you're going to use <laughs> So I need stupid. more blowjobs, mommy. No, that's just creepy. No, please don't. And then she goes, oh, babe, don't worry. We have to give you some blow That's all you had to say. That's all you had to say. Oh, my Lord. Not I don't know what kind of kinky things have been going on on this podcast. I have been gone too long. I don't know what kind of kinks. This is what happens when we let Dante broadcast out of his bedroom over there. Now that he, now that's the new location. It's the, the bed location. is too close. The bed is too close. It's just too close. Right there. Let me let me put it out of the screen, right? Here. <laughs> that's where all the magic oh, happens. There, all the magic happens right there. If yeah, that, if that tufted headboard could talk. <laughs> it would say, ouch. That's what it would say if it could talk. Oh, wow. It would be like, Can I get some ice, please? It would say, I've seen things. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen things, man. Things. When the movers when the movers came to 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 take the bed apart, they were like, "Hey, well, what is all this extra support wood underneath this belt? Why do you have <laughs> why do you have four by four? Why do you have why do you have shock absorbers underneath your box spring? <laughs> what is this? We treated four by fours under the bed. This is weird. I was like, just just <laughs> just, just move the bed. Just come on. Yeah, but why do you have a crash pad under here? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that's fascinating that you, you have slowed down. Like, that's the scary thing about me, about potentially having kids. It's just the notion of, like, my, my girl is very good with kids, and she'll be like, well, you have to talk to them, and you have to set up the thing in, in advance and let them know and give them a job. And I'm like, yeah. I do not want to do any of this. I, I just want to go and get the things from the supermarket. I don't need to pregame and do game planning and – you know what's funny is you think it. it's gonna be so frustrating but that's only because you didn't grow up with it and i think that's why we default to that's gonna be annoying or that's gonna be frustrating i don't want to do that and then you start doing it and it becomes oh. this thing where you're like now i'm doing the stuff that i wish was done for me as a, a kid where mm -hmm. they're like i'm wish you would have explained to me th this thing instead of just yelling at me or instead of making me feel mm. bad or feel stupid because that's stuff that I now have to fix. Those so cracks you're, I have to you're, fix. you're looking at these things where you understand why they were yelling and now you're like, yeah, but you could have just... You could have just explained, explained a lot more stuff. Yeah. Like, a lot of just more explanations would have been helpful. Now, my mom of, recently yeah. asked me, she was like, because my son has a tablet and she was like, well, what do you do when he cries if you take it away and i go i console him <laughs> I, I i console him but i still don't give the tablet back i tell him his time is up that i'm sorry he's upset about it but that he will have it again later on if he's good or if whatever happens he'll get his tablet again mm. but until then he's your going mom, outside your mom is like your mom is like you Talk to him? Yeah. Like, what is like, this? You beat him. And I know yeah. talk to him. She goes, you well, beat him? <laughs> what do you do with the belt? And you go, what belt? She goes, I mean, what do you do? Why don't, what do you do with the belt? You have you no belt? <laughs> that it, what is it? Get the taco stick. What do you do with that? <laughs> yeah. The tate quieto stick. Oh, tate my quieto God. Stick. Tate quieto. Every Puerto Rican's nightmare. Tate quieto stick. Yo, keep my quiet stick. One. Or it's keep... Uh, yeah, is that what it means? To be quiet? Yeah, it's relax. It's like relax. Sit your yeah. down. Relax. Shut up. Relax stick. The relax stick. What a what a thing to call the stick, by the way. The relax stick. Like you would hear that and you'd be like, what do I do? Hold it and relax? Mm, not exactly. No, not quite. Mm. It's like calling a, a nightstick a, a de-escalator. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. This isn't a taser. It's a yeah. sleep machine. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like you gotta be shit. It's a me. night night machine. Dante, what's the thing that you wish that your parents did differently for you? Um, 
loved me. <laughs> you are ridiculous. I cannot. You're like, and then the then it just goes silent. All we hear is. <laughs> Then I'm like, oh, on today's episode, <laughs> a very emotional moment. A, a gunshot, and then the cam. <laughs> oh my god! Why would the, hold on? Why would the so computer go? If I grab it, oh, oh you grab. grabbed it. Then just the blood comes through. It. It. <laughs> it a, um, you know, I I don't really think of it that way. In that. I just, I don't, I, I realized that they just didn't have the intellectual acuity or the emotional maturity to do what they did. They did what they did. And um, it, it just, you know, um, pressure, you know, pressure makes diamonds. I mean, so I don't know. I don't know if I wish, I mean, the one thing I wish that they would have done is held my sisters accountable. Like, just mm -hmm. not let my sisters be as cunty as they were and just as self and just condone it. And because they were women, you know, they, they had this very sexist thing as well. It's, you know, I mean, that's women and they, you know, they, they act cunty and it's fine. And then it always, it always ended up rolling out as being horrible for me. Because they they were just it was always condoned, but what I think they really did was they made them they made them horrible women, you know, just to, to other people. Now I mean, you know, like one of my sisters kind of figured it out that she couldn't be horrible, you know, she couldn't be, old, you know, a grown ass older woman and be a bitch as well, and so she learned. You know, I'm gonna teach treat this motherfucker as not nice, but or she, nice for a little bit. I can't be full. I can't drive sixty. No, she's, but, she's yeah. nice to him. She because he don't put oh. up with the shit, and she's learned. She's learned that she better be nice to him. But it's a it's a funny, it's a funny story. I don't know if I've ever talked about this, and this is this is interesting because you, it it goes to me understanding how. The, the difference in social dynamics between men and women. She met this guy who was a contractor, right? And they were dating and whatever. And then he um, he basically renovated her home. Like he, she hired him as a contractor and he, he renovated her home and hooked up her home so that she had a, a Airbnb. And I remember her talking to me about like that he, you know, they were dating, but um, he was, uh, they were, like, he, all of a sudden he was distant. Like he wasn't coming over to spend the night, wouldn't stay the night through or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I'm asking questions like I do in all my consultations. And I was like, well, all the work, the first thing I said, well, all the work that he did in your home, how much work did he do? And she says, oh, I go, I go, if you had to, you know, ballpark the number, and it was like 80 grand that he's, and I said, I said, well, did you pay him back? And she said, well, I kept trying to pay him back. He kept going, no, no, we'll, we'll take care of it at the end. We'll take care of it at the end. We'll take care of it at the end, right? She's like, I tried to pay him. I go, yeah, but it's how, how long ago? Did he finish the, the work? And I was like, yeah. about a, says like a year and a half. And I go, well, did you pay him? And she goes, no, but I would have. And, I, you know, her, this was her thing. But this is the kind of the selfishness and the self-centeredness. So I said to her, listen, if you're in a relationship where you feel honestly that this is that this relationship is not working, right? Yeah. You're in a relationship with him, it's supposed to be a committed relationship. He doesn't come, he doesn't stay over, he doesn't want to spend the night, whatever. I go, you have to tell him based on what he's giving you that this is not good enough. This is not sufficient. What you, I, I'm, I understand that you may not want to come over, you may not want to spend the night, whatever it is, but for me, a relationship is not good enough if that's the nature of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I said, there, but if you mention him, if you, if you say you, you think it's best we just separate, 
because you're not getting out of the relationship you want. I go, if the first thing he mentions is the 80 grand, you know that's what the issue was. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, she did what I told him, told her. He mentioned the 80 grand, and then she was like, well, I'm really sorry. I can't pay it to you for you all at once, but I'll get it. I'll pay you, and I'll get to pay you, in, you know, and I'll pay it in part yeah. to make sure I pay you and blah, 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 blah. She wasn't, like, trying to cheat him. But so what I was trying to explain to him is that a man that feels unappreciated is a man who it will, will be petty about what he does. But a man that feels appreciated will give you everything that you want. But we don't, we don't really, like guys have, you know, when you look, when you look at Akon and these motherfuckers have white houses with the circular staircase and the, the fish pond and stuff. The only reason why we do that is for women. We do that because you want to, you want women to come in your home. Like, oh, this, this is not, you know, like, it, it's a way of showing your flash and your value. Your, your, and, and so all we really want, like we men in general have a very simple kind of life. Like, you know, I mean, if you like a motorcycle, you get a motorcycle, you ride around, or if it's a jet ski or whatever, you got that one thing. But there's so much that you, dip, as men, we don't care about and so much that we do simply for women. So it's funny mm -hmm. because I, I remember getting into an argument with a girlfriend of mine at one point. And I had to explain her. I go, the way you're, it's, she goes, what's the problem with what I'm asking? I go, it's not what you're asking, it's how you're asking. Yeah. If you ask me nicely, I'll, I'm, I'm a softie. I'll give you anything you want. Yeah. I, I, I love you. I'll give you anything you want. But if you come at me aggressively or you don't ask, you expect, and then it becomes a whole different thing. It's, there's a way to do it. If you're kind about it, I can do anything for you. You yeah. know, it's the appreciation that's part of it. When it not becomes an expectation. It. Yeah. When it becomes an expectation and it's like, no, you're supposed to be doing this for me. Yeah. That's when, so, that's when it becomes tricky. Yeah. Well, it was interesting because as soon as she, yeah, as soon as she said, um, I'll pay you back, right? You know, he was like, he was like, well, if you want to break up, that's what you want to do. And then, and then she was like, but I want to pay you back. And then as soon as she said she would pay him back, then he started coming around and she paid him a little bit. But he he didn't even she didn't even have to pay the whole 80. It was just the gesture of him knowing that because, you know, he's a contractor. He has his own buildings and stuff like yeah. that. And, and it was just a matter of I've done all of this. And then for you not to even follow up and say, hey, I want to get so that I could say ah, I shouldn't up. have to ask. Also, it should right. be like that's such a yeah. big thing that it just kind of lets me know about you. I, I do feel like men are very literal at times. And when he said we'll square it up at the end. Yeah, that's what that meant. Square it, it, up, square it up at the end. And then now it's awkward because she's not bringing it up because yeah. to especially, and then we go back to programming, to a woman that's programmed in a certain way to believe, no, I guess this man is saying we'll square it up at the end because he doesn't want me to pay him anything. Mm. And it's like, no, 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 no. no he he literally means uh -huh. at the end of the project, as with any construction job, mm -hmm. you will square it away at the end. And his intention, I think, really wasn't to get, to get paid anyway, but he just wanted to know that she was because they ultimately ended up getting married and they have projects of their own and they actually but it's a communication up, thing it's like the well, two of you they need also to communicate. ended up suing me for the house like you know what I'm saying which is a whole nother thing but what is it with siblings and suing that happened to my father my father was sued by his sister for his parents house like that they're was scumbags. They, they're it reconciled just because they're si siblings doesn't mean they're not scumbags because it's a money yeah. grab and because yeah. there's a there's a there's people that don't live in abundance. They they're always so. It's like I always say when you grab when you if you if you try to you get a handful of sand and you squeeze it tight. When you open your hand, there's no sand left in your hand. Mm -hmm. You there has to be an openness in which you carry the sand so that it so that you you keep some in your hand. And and what was interesting was as soon as she started playing and paying him back, everything. You know, everything went back to they ended up being together. They ultimately ended up getting married. 
And then I said, well, you see what I told you? And she was like, oh, no, he, he said it wasn't that. It wasn't, it was, hmm. oh, it wasn't the $80,000 that I saved your marriage because I gave you some advice that, such, such, that you, and oh, he said it wasn't that. All right, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Hmm. So it's, um, and, and in retrospect, I wish I had just never given her any advice at all. Just let her sit in her shit. And she'd be, she'd have 12 cats now. But, um, <laughs> Let's, but you uh, guys have reconciled, so at least that's good. I think it's yeah, nice to know. Yeah, that, I got yeah. a hammer named oh. Reconciled. Wow, wow. Okay. So, um, but at least, you're, I mean, at least your other sisters, have, you have a good relationship with your other sisters, and I think that's the important no, thing. No, that's worse. That's worse. Oh, they're worse. That's the good one. Well, you reconciled. have your health. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, guess. I have <laughs> like, hammers, Reconcile and Revenge. Reconcile, Revenge, and, and Fuck You. So, um... But let's let's do. We're gonna do a little more on the Patreon. But I want to dig into some stuff. I want us to talk about how you see your son and how you raise him to be a better in in relationships and what you see perceive that in. Um, okay. Plug your stuff. You got anything going on, G? Uh, yeah, I got a couple of road gigs. You can check out my website, GinaBrion.com. See if I'm coming to a city near you on uh, May 17th. I am doing a one night only show out in LA. Uh, all the information will be up on my website. Check it out. It's one night only. And then the rest of the weekend, I am in Oxnard, California, May 18th through the 20th. So come through. Have some fun. We got a great lineup. And where can they see your specials, Gina? Where can they find? You can uh... check me out on Amazon. You can check out two specials. Uh, the Floor is Lava, which is the most recent special on Amazon. And then Pacifically Speaking, which was my first ever special. My little baby special is on there. And you can also check out HBO uh, Entrenos, as well as my half hour special, uh, Easily Offended. Yeah. Uh, specifically... What's the other Pac story? Pacifically speaking. Yeah, that's the that's the one where I met my my great good friend Gabriel Iglesias. So, <laughs> so I haven't speak. seen actually I haven't had a chance to see Gabe. I actually do miss working with him. I haven't seen him in a hot minute, but he was, he was so sweet to me. He was such a a warm hearted man. It just I could just feel the love coming. This is a off. guy thing. It's is just his it's just back sweat was. Oh, he is. He was, was working that night. He was working. He was uh, producing you know, you the always, special. You always give a. You always give a fucking. Always because give a, a, he is a good dude. Like it's it's like when you, you meet some... to you. To you. To you. He was good. Wow. I, he was actually a good dude to you, but he was rude and disrespectful for no reason at all. But, but anyway. That's a, well, what a way to close it out. Let's leave on a wow, positive guys. note. Yeah, let's leave on <laughs> something <laughs> super I'm positive. Taking, I'm taking them to, but I mean, long as Gina says he, he, you know, she was good to him. That's what matters, because you know he was nice to her. Anyway, let's let's go to the Patreon. Harry, you gonna do something or you wanna Oh sorry, Dante. Yeah, let's uh you want me to do my plug? I'm sorry, I was just uh just I mean, basking bask in that uncomfortableness of our good friend Gina Pion. Fuck that. Fuck that. It, it, that well, no, it, it was that's fine. I didn't say you were wrong. I just said it was uncomfortable. All that's right. neither here nor there. All right, fair enough. <laughs> that's all Dante needs to hear. Fair but enough. uh for me, uh this is a good time to do plugs because now people are definitely paying attention. Um I do relationship consultations. You could email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Follow me on uh, TikTok, YouTube, all the social media, at Harry Turjanian, where I'm posting. And uh, please follow us over at patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus content, including continue our conversation with the fantastic, the amazing Gina Brion. My good friend. Uh, I love her to death. Uh, you know you can get my consultations. One, DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Um, we I'm also doing, uh, I'm also doing co-hosting, uh, Godfrey's podcast, uh, in Godfrey We Trust, and I'm doing a lot of road gigs with him, running around with him, so check that out, plus I'm always at Stand Up New York, and whatever, whatever. GYBB, get your balls back, WWDD, what would Dante do? Uh, the sexual revolution is being podcasted. Um, I love y'all, man. Let's check us on the Patreon side. Don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. You helping us helps us keep it going. So 
www.patreon.com slash manschool202.